Australian property prices have now recorded their steepest and deepest decline on record, pulling 8.4% from the peak. This exceeds the prior record of 8.38% from 2017 to 2019, which notably occurred over a longer time period and was due to some different factors. Furthermore, these declines have been broad-based. They've existed across all states. However, they've been even more poignant in places like Sydney and in Melbourne. So with that in mind, it's worth looking at how these property prices have fallen across Australia, some of the drivers of these declines, and what this might mean for the property market going forward, especially during 2023. So how have these property prices differed across cities? Well, the property declines have been broad-based, but there is a lot of heterogeneity. Sydney experienced the largest declines, with property prices falling 13% from the peak. Then we've got Brisbane, property prices fell 10% from the peak. And in Melbourne, they fell 8.6%. We compare this with Perth, property prices fell only about 1% in Perth. Significant variation across capital cities and across regions. Now, despite these property price declines, property prices still are up on the past couple of years. So for example, over the 2020 to 2022 period, property prices increased by more than 20% across Australia. So even with these recent declines, property prices still have increased over the past few years, suggesting property investors are still slightly out ahead, although not out ahead as much as they would otherwise prefer to be. The question is then, why have property prices declined so much? And the answer comes down to interest rates. This should be no surprise to anyone who has a variable rate mortgage or who has looked to borrow to buy a property or who has a fixed rate mortgage period that is coming to an end. Interest rates have increased significantly. If we just focus on the RBA cash rate, it's gone from 0.1% at the beginning of 2022 to 3.1% by the end of 2022, with more rate hikes coming during 2023, at least according to most economists. This has made it much more difficult for people to afford to pay nearly as much to go out and buy a property. It's made it more difficult for people to afford to pay their existing mortgage. It's more difficult now for people to borrow to buy another property, more difficult for people to use existing equity in existing property to go and buy an additional piece of real estate. Basically, people can't afford to pay as much money to buy property as they used to be able to do so. The cost of capital has gone up. This effectively is by design. This is what the RBA wants to achieve. They want to make money more expensive, and this has the inadvertent consequence of making it more difficult for people to afford to pay to buy property, and hence why we've seen the property price declines. This notably is different from some prior declines. For example, if we look at 2017 to 2019, the bulk of that decline was due to APRA tightening their lending standards, and particular tightening their standards surrounding investment property. By contrast here, the declines are primarily due to the increase in interest rates and the decrease in people's spending power. This is likely to continue for some time as we see interest rates increase in the future. So what then does the future have in store for property? Well, it doesn't look like property is going to recover in the very near future. The RBA appears to be set to increase interest rates by at least another 25 basis points, potentially up to another 50 basis points, taking the cash rate to 3.6%. However, there could be some light at the end of the tunnel. As soon as the RBA starts to pause and potentially decrease interest rates, we can see people re-enter the property market. At the moment, there's a degree of caution. People don't know exactly how high the cash rate is going to get. Therefore, they're not entirely sure what to plan for. But as soon as the RBA pauses in rates hikes, then people will have some certainty about what the rates are going to be. This will give them more confidence to come back into the market, and they're going to be more willing to buy property. Furthermore, as we're seeing inflation start to attenuate, this will take some of the pressure off the RBA and other overseas central banks, which will enable people to come back into the market. And as soon as property prices stop declining, people are then going to have more equity and more certainty around the equity in their existing properties, which will enable them to re-enter the market. So during the second half of 2023, we might start to see property prices perhaps stagnate, perhaps slightly recover.